Hey friends, welcome back. Thank you for joining us again for this series on the Holy Spirit, an invitation for you to have a rich and transformative relationship with the Holy Spirit. In order for us to recover that kind of a relationship, we have to think about what it means when we talk about a spirit. So what is a spirit? A spirit is a personal being who transcends the known physical world, but has the capacity to act within it. Let me use an analogy. Imagine that you've gone to your favorite uh, movie at the theater, and because it's well done and it appeals to uh, things that interest you, it has the power to make you laugh or to make you cry. It has a power to scare you uh, and has a power to make you want to go home and love people more. But when you break it down, all you're actually seeing when you're in the theater are pixels on a screen. And yet, somehow the pixels, just the physical screen and the light dancing on it, has all kinds of power over you. And that's because behind the pixels is an entire production. Actors who may well have done that work even a year before you said in the theater, a, a, a script writers and producers and a, a equipment hands, and all of them, again, maybe even as many as two or three years before you came in there, were behind the scenes producing this thing that now you interact with only as pixels on a screen. Imagine if we were able to think of the world in a similar way. So our senses, our five senses, you know, the sense of ears and smell and uh, of taste and hearing and of feeling, they pick up the physical world, that is the pixels on the screen. But behind the physical world is a much richer, much bigger and much more active spiritual world. There's a spiritual dimension. So the Bible talks about this spiritual dimension when it explains that God is a spirit and also that God has a spirit, the Holy Spirit that we're talking about. But we also learn that God has spirits who serve his will that are called angels. We learn that there's a fallen spirit, a spirit who's in rebellion against God, uh, named uh, the devil or a Satan. And then we discover that uh, the uh, Satan has his own spirits and they're out in malevolent ways trying to entice people to do that which is wrong. We read that we have a soul or a spirit. Oftentimes those terms are used interchangeably with, with respect to humans. And so what we're invited to do in scripture is to look behind the physics and to see the spiritual dimensions. Uh, and by the way, this really shouldn't surprise us. You know, chemicals can't explain all of life. They just can't. That life is alive, that it has forces behind it that are much richer and much deeper than physics and chemistry. By the way, physics and chemistry are great. We love them. But we just need to recognize that they're animated by something, that there's a ghost in the machine that makes it all work. Most people throughout history have known this. Many people, in fact, I would say probably more than half the people on planet Earth today still know this. So many places in the world, in the global south, for example, the question is not, is what is the spirit or is there a spirit here? The question is, which spirit is this? Because they're very much attuned to the spirit who's present. So when we talk about recovering the Holy Spirit or living a life immersed in the Holy Spirit, for many of us, Half the game occurs when we just learn to see spirits, when we learn to understand that there is a spiritual dimension to everything, a spiritual dimension to our motives, a spiritual dimension to our relationships, a spiritual dimension to the physics around us that we see, a spiritual dimension to uh, what people might be up to, what nations are doing. And so one of the uh, most important elements in understanding the Holy Spirit is understanding spirit, recognizing that there is a, a rich and a deep spiritual reality. And so uh, we have to learn to transcend the physics and the materialism of our world. So we're going to look at the Holy Spirit. And as we look at the Holy Spirit, we want to remind ourselves that he's the one who can animate the Christian life. So you might have all the pieces, all the pixels on the screen. You might have, uh, you know, all the commitments that you think you should make uh, as a, a follower of Jesus, as a Christian. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, none of it comes to life. It's just chemicals laying out on the table. So we require the Holy Spirit in order to become fully alive. And that's why you're here, because you want not just a doctrine about the Holy Spirit, but you want an experience of the Holy Spirit, and He will give you life. I'll see you next time.